Hey there, I'm John Zimmerman with Upper Creek Angler, and we are continuing our work through Steve Scoose's book, Grayling Flies. This is fly number 18, the CDC and Elk. It's a really simple pattern, um, really only two materials other than the thread. That's a CDC feather and some elk hair. Um, I'm using some uh, nano silk in the bobbin and I almost always use nano silk or a, um, a thread of equal tensile strength um, for diameter when tying um, elk hair or deer hair caddises because I really like to be able to s really pull down on those hairs without um, being worried about breaking my thread. So we're going to take um, a single piece of CDC and tie it in by the stem, by the top of the stem. Bring the, um, bring that forward. Well, otherwise we're not going to have a body on this fly. It's just the, the CDC. And grab the, um, the CDC with a pair of hackle pliers and we'll just bring this this feather forward and when your stem starts to meet the hook with the actual feathers you want to pull those back with each pass, pull back, pull back, pull back, and um, we're up here to the top of the hook now, and we'll Tie this fellow off and clip out this upper end of the quill. Now, um, what I do is I come in and just break a lot of these off. I don't like cutting them. Um, I think it gives it a slightly unnatural look to go in and cut, but if you go in and break some of those uh, longer, more unruly fibers off, you'll get the um, the overall impression of the fly that you're looking for. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and cut out a, um, a clump of elk hair. And um, I, I have multiple huge, kind of two feet by two feet sides of elk hair. I didn't break the whole thing out, but I just want to go in and get rid of any of the the guard hairs that are at the base of those feathers. We'll take our hair stacker and give them a tap to align the, the ends. You want the end of the elk hair to extend just to the base of the hook. Um, what I do at this point is I go ahead and clip these guys flush with the hook eye. And then I'll make two soft loops and then on the third one really pull down and that flares the head. Okay. So um, that is the, the nuts and bolts of, of this fly. Um, one thing that you can do to enhance the, the security of it is to run your thread through the elk hair, through the head. And that will really help to keep this guy in place. I'm, I am quite sure that either in 
the elk hair caddis flies that you have personally tied or in the ones that you have bought from your local fly shop you have had those spin the the elk hair itself spin around on the um, the hook shank on you and um, if you really anticipate this fly lasting a very long time you can actually whip finish right into the into the um, the head too and you will get rid of um, add some security that way as well just going in and a couple of those strands of elk obscured the eye a little bit nothing that a, um, a clean out won't deal with but there you have a, um, a CDC and elk one of my um, my personal caddis flyers is very similar to this I don't um, Palmer the hackle the CDC up I lay um, three or four depending on the size CDC feathers straight down and um, tie the the elk hair on top of that or the deer hair on top of that but in both versions one of the the most critical aspects to the overall success of the pattern is that unlike a hackled elk hair caddis this fly sits right down in the surface film just like um, actual caddis flies do instead of being propped way up off the surface um, with a, a long hackle so definitely tie yourself up some of these and um, you know if you've got darker caddis flies in your neck of the woods or a lighter caddis flies in your neck of the woods varying the pattern up is is very simply done by altering the thread color the color of the CDC CDC comes dyed in um, a blue million colors nowadays and as does elk and deer hair so um, certainly tie yourself up some of these they do um, catch fish anywhere um, caddis flies are dancing on the water happy time